to Loopy Mabel Vintage Style Crochet. My name is Jane and in today's tutorial I thought I would continue on with the theme of the granny stitch which everybody loves and I've just done a couple of other tutorials using that stitch and I thought I would use it to make this granny stitch capelet. So if you didn't want to take on anything too complicated at this stage this is perfect for you. This example I've used using one main colour with contrasting colours but in today's tutorial I'm going to use a colour changing yarn just to see what the effect that gives. I'm going to be using King Cole Riot Double Knit Yarn. So if you'd like to grab a coffee and follow along with me I shall see you very soon. So for this tutorial I'm going to be using the King Cole Riot Double Knitting Yarn. This is the juniper shade and there's 100 grams in each ball there is approximately 324 yards it's got 30% wool in it and 70% premium acrylic you don't have to use this yarn you can use any double knit yarn and any shade that you choose we're also going to be using a 4.5 millimeter hook you're going to need some scissors and it's handy to have some stitch markers if you're fairly new to crochet they are quite uh, invaluable for helping you work out where the ends and the beginning of your rows start so it's handy to have but not essential so let's begin this video will be in UK crochet term so let's begin so we're going to first start off with our slip knot so I just need to make that whichever way we're comfortable with. I do have a YouTube tutorial on how to do that and any of the basic stitches if you're not familiar or you need to have a refresher go and check out those videos too if you need. And we're going to begin by crocheting 90 chains. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So we need to continue on like this until we have 90 chains, 90 chains. So we need to now slip stitch to the first chain but do that your chain isn't twisted so if you just need to run your finger all the way down that chain so it straightens out like so and insert our hook into that very first chain and slip stitch closed like so and that's your neck opening there so we're going to chain three so one two and three and that's going to count as your first treble and down into that same stitch that we've chained three from we need to do two more trebles so insert your hook one and two and that's formed our first granny stitch cluster so we're going to skip two stitches so one two insert our hook into that third chain along and work three trebles one two and three skip two one two and insert our hook into the next chain and work three trebles one two and three and skip two and three more trebles and we're going to work like this all the way along this first row three trebles skip two and three more trebles so if you want to work all the way along doing exactly the same as this three trebles skip two three trebles 
and I shall see you somewhere near the end. Right, I've just got a couple, one more set of clusters to do, so I'll just finish off. So we're going to skip two and insert our hook into that third chain, like so. And we should have two left, which we do one, two, and we're going to skip those two and we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first chain three that we did. So insert your hook into that third chain and if you can't quite see where it is just need to count one two three insert your hook there insert your hook and yarn through and yarn through to slip stitch that first round and you just want to double check that it's not twisted in any way before you continue on. If it is twisted then you need obviously to pull it out and start again and make sure your, your first row is not twisted. So row two we're going to chain three again one, two and three and we're going to be using these spaces now that are being created in between the trebles and that's what we're going to be working in throughout this video now so we're no longer going to work into the tops of the stitches we're going to be working into that space there and that's how the granny stitch pattern is formed. Right so we're going to start row two and if you're new to and if you are new to crochet and you're still not sure of your stitches and, and when the end when the rows end and begin it is useful to put your stitch marker in I'll show you exactly what I mean so we're now going to chain three one two and three so if you insert your stitch marker through that third chain like so and then when we come back to the end of the row you shall see exactly where you're going to insert your hook and then we're going to go down into that space directly below that three chain that we've just done and work two trebles so yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through and down for one more treble like so and then we're just going to work all the way along again so three trebles down into that next space so working three trebles like so and down into the next with three more trebles so round two we're just going to work all the way along working three trebles into each space like so so if you want to continue on and perhaps pause the video and I shall see you when we're somewhere near uh, here right so I've got back round to the end of the second round so we just need to now slip stitch to the top of that chain three and as you can see we know exactly where our hook's going to go because we had our stitch marker there so this is what I was on about before when if you're, other, if you're new to crochet and not sure where you're going to insert your hook this solves that problem for you so it definitely well worth using so just remove our stitch marker because that's where we're going to insert our hook into the top of that chain three there like so and just slip stitch through again and that's round two right so we're now going to do chain three and back down into that first space again so we're going to work two trebles and we're going to increase so we're going to start our increase in this row so we're going to do two trebles and there's our first cluster then we're going to chain one and then go back down and do three more trebles one two and three and I just insert our hook into the top of that chain three should have done that before and that's an increase made 
and then we're going to work three trebles into the next seven spaces. So three trebles into the next seven spaces. So one, Six, and this is the seventh one. There we go, and we're then going to increase in the next space. So we're going to three trebles one, two, three, chain one, and then back down into that space, three more trebles. So that's our increase stitch. So we've created an increase again and then we're going to work three trebles over the next seven spaces then we're going to do the increase then seven more spaces then the increase so if you want to work all the way along working three trebles in the following seven spaces then do your three treble chain one three treble into the next one then three trebles into the following seven and so on and so on and I shall see you towards the end and then I will go on to round three. Right so I'm nearly at the end and I just wanted to double check that we, you've got the same increases as me so you should have one, two, three, four increases on this round and you should be left with five spaces to work the remaining row. So we've got five lots of three trebles so I'm just finishing off my fifth one here like so so we did our last increase there and then we've got one two three four five which takes us to the end of that row so we're just going to remove our stitch marker and slip stitch as usual to the top of that chain three and that completes that round so for the next row we're going to go back to just working an ordinary granny stitch row so we're just going to chain three and insert our hook into that space below and work two trebles. I'm just going to insert the hook into the top of that three chain and we're going to don't forget to work in that space where the increases are too. So just insert your hook into that space and work three trebles. So we're going to work all the way around this row with three trebles in every space. So if you want to pause the video and continue on now working three trebles in every space and I shall see you towards the end just going to finish off with three trebles and then we'll slip stitch to the top of that chain three like so. Right so that completes round four. So for round five we're going to do some more increases so we're just going to chain three like so. Insert your stitch marker if necessary if that helps you like so and we're going to go down into this same space that's directly below and we're going to work two trebles, chain one and three trebles. So two trebles chain one and three trebles And then into the next one, we're going to work three trebles. Chain 
and then increase into the next. So three trebles, chain one, three trebles. And down into the next, work three trebles. And increase in the next. So we're just going to work like this all the way to the end of row five. So work three trebles in one space and increase with three trebles, chain one, three trebles in the next, all the way along. So I've just got one last set of three trebles to do. There we go. And we're just going to slip stitch to that three chain there. So we're now moving on to row six. So we've done one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to move on to row six and we're going to do row six, seven, and eight. We're all going to be the same. So for row six, seven, and eight, we're just going to do granny stitch all the way around. So there'll be no increases, just three rows of granny stitch. So chain three. Insert your marker if you need to, yarn over and work two more trebles just exactly like we did before and then into those spaces that you've just made from the increase round would work three trebles. I love using this type of yarn because I don't you think it's so exciting when because you don't know how it's going to turn out and off, you're just crocheting along and the colours evolve. So back to crochet, sorry I got a little bit excited there. Um, right, so just continue along now working three trebles into every space for the next three rows. So four rows, six, seven and eight. And I shall see you somewhere near the end of row eight. Right, I'm just coming to the end of row eight. So I've just got one more set of three trebles to do. like so and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that chain three and that completes row eight. So we're going to move on to row nine which is another increase round and we're going to repeat what we did in row five. So if you remember in row five we did our increase then we did uh, three trebles and then we increase into the next, three trebles increase into the next. So that's what we're going to do for this row again. So we're going to chain three and make our increase into this first space like we did before. So that's a chain one, then three more trebles down into that space. And we're just going to work the same all the way around now for this row. Row nine. So we're going to work three trebles, then we're going to increase, which is three trebles, chain one, three trebles, then three trebles, then increase, three trebles, increase, all the way around. So if you want to do that, I'll pause the video and I shall see you somewhere round about here. Right, so I'm just coming to the last few um, sections here on this round. And on this round, um, we're going to finish off with three trebles and then another increase. And we're just going to slip stitch to the top of this last stitch. So one, two, three, insert your hook into that third chain there and slip stitch that row closed. So that completes row nine. So now we're going to work row 10, 11 and 12. And those rows are just going to be granny, the granny stitch 
in every space around for the next three rows so we'll just make a start so chain three and insert your hook into that space below and then into that next space there three trebles and then three trebles into the next and just make sure you don't miss that space in the increase one insert your hook into there and work three trebles so this is all we're going to do now for the next three rows for rows 10 11 and 12 so if you want to pause the video and I shall see you towards the end of row 12 and we'll slip stitch as usual to the top of that chain 3 right so we're going to work on row 13 so chain 3 I'm going to work an increase into this space so it's two trebles chain one and three more trebles like so and then we're going to work three trebles over the next three spaces and then increase in the next so three trebles in one in two in three and we're going to increase in the next with three trebles chain space three trebles and this forms the pattern for this round so I'll just recap again so for row 13 we're going to work three trebles three trebles three trebles so three trebles over the next three spaces then the increase then three trebles over the next three spaces then the increase all the way around and if you want to pause the video and I shall see you somewhere around about here and we'll go on to row 14 from there. Right so I'm just coming to the end of row 13 and we just finish off instead of working the three clusters and then the um, increase on the last section we're just going to work over the four so three trebles in the last four like so so we did our increase and we're just working over the four and we're just going to slip stitch to the top of our chain three so just look at that third chain and slip stitch and that completes round 13 so now we're going to now go on to the rest of the capelet and there's no more increases now so we're just going to work the granny stitch throughout and we're going to work for a further 22 more rows so no more increases so all we're going to do is chain three two trebles into that first space and then three trebles into the next and three into the next and just repeat this a further 22 more rows so we have 35 rows in total from start to finish and I shall see you somewhere near the end of the 35th row so I'm just coming to the end now of my last row 35 rows we've done in total 22 rows after that last increase round I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that three chain that we did at the beginning And trim our yarn and 
and pull through. So that's the end, so that's row 35, so we just need to sew in our tail there. And all we've got to do now is work on our neck edging. Right, so I'm just going to finish off this capelet with a little bit of a collar neck edging just to give it something a little bit extra touch to it rather than just leaving it plain so you don't have to do this if you just like it plain without anything else on it you could just literally leave it there and pop it on over your head and wear it but I'm just going to show you how to add something a little bit different and it's more options for you when you're doing your crocheting too so I'm just going to attach my yarn and I'm just going to attach it to because obviously the capelet is now upside down this is where we started so we work down obviously this is the base where we started the chains so you can just see the last part of the chain we've worked into one part of it and this is the remaining part of the chain so I'm just going to insert my hook into those stitches there so just insert your hook to any one along and attach your yarn chain one and then back down and work double crochet or single crochet if you're watching from the US and I'm just going to double crochet all the way along into those chains and I'm just working in that loose tail as going along you don't have to do that you can always sew that tail in at the end but I think it's a lot easier this way so, so you should have 90 in total because that's what we had when we started off our chain at the beginning so I'm just going to work all the way around doing double crochet right so I'm just got a few more to pick up here double crochet and try to keep your tension fairly slack on this neck area because obviously you've got to be able to pop it on over your head easy enough and we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet yarn over and slip stitch it through and that's just your first round for the neck edging so you should still have a fairly springy neck edging nothing too tight because as I say you've got to get your head in through the opening and the opening is quite snug so you just be careful that you don't um, make it any tighter because obviously you want to get your head head through okay so now we're going to work a little collar so we're just going to from here we're going to chain one again it doesn't count as a stitch and we're going to work half trebles which is yarn over and we're going to go down into that same stitch pull through yarn over and pull through all three so again and we're going to work all the way along we're going to leave four one, two, three, four clusters free. So we're going to stop that stitch there before the four clusters and that's just going to be a little bit of an opening there. So if you want to work half trebles all the way around but leave four trebles free. So if it helps, add a stitch marker now. So one, two, three, four so we need to work up to that stitch there one two three four three so we work up to that stitch there and we're going to stop there and then we're going to turn and work back around so if you want a half treble all the way along place a stitch marker in if it helps leaving four clusters free stitch marker there and that's where we're going to stop so i shall see you somewhere around about here right so i've just got a couple more half trebles to go Use my stitch marker, so I'm just going to take that out and work my last half treble into that stitch. And I'm now left with the four four clusters there. So that's I'm, we're going to leave that free now, and we're going to turn our work from here on. So we're going to chain one and turn, and that chain one doesn't count as a stitch. And we're just going to yarn over and insert our hook into that first stitch and work a half treble again and we're just going to work a half treble all the way along this row again 
up to the last stitch there and then we're going to chain one and turn and work all the way along up to there with half trebles and we're going to do this for four rows in total so we've already done one row so we need to do three more rows so if you want to do three more rows so we've got a total of four rows and I shall see you somewhere near the end of the fourth row last two that one there and the last one on the end like so and just need to trim our yarn So, just quickly sewing our ends, like so, so you should have a collar looking something similar to this and I'm just going to finish it off by turning it over and adding a couple of buttons there and there so I'm just going to quickly sew them on so there we go there's our completed granny capelet with a little button detailing on the collar there and I just wanted to show you how much yarn I've got left I used three balls in total three balls and there's 100 grams in each ball so 300 grams of yarn in total and this is how much I've got left just so it gives you an idea. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to make this gorgeous granny stitch capelet. We've added a little bit of a detail to the neck just to give it something a little bit different and I've added the two wooden buttons and I just think it just finishes it off and gives it that little bit of a vintage feel as you know me I like to do um, I absolutely love this yarn it's going to be one of my staple yarns in my uh, wool collection definitely uh, it's just so lovely to work with so if you've never used this wool before I would highly recommend it I just think it's worked out really well it's a simple tutorial really but what you can make out of the simple granny stitch is just amazing and this is obviously an example of that if you wanted to do it like the original one that I showed you at the beginning of the video there's the the other one there and obviously I've just used a block block colour again double knit yarn I've just used a block colour but then I've used some contrasting yarns um, in this example and again along the bottom so it just shows you how different they can look different effects both with double knit yarn but the both look totally different if you did like this video I would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't already done so that would be amazing I would love that if you could do that and then if you hit the notification bell you'll be kept up to date with all the videos I do bring out I'm hoping hoping to bring lots more videos out for you I've got lots of designs waiting for me to create so please hit that bell and then you'll be notified as soon as I bring anything out but don't be daunted it's only crochet and as I always say practice does make perfect and until the next time please take care and happy crochet yeah.